Let's get it, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Clayton English. I'm back with another one. We back English Majors headquarters. You know what it is, man. Hey, man. Shout out to everybody at 85. Shout out to everybody making this work, man. We back to it, man. And today's episode, you see it on the board, man. We talking about the culture. What is the culture, man? What's not the culture? And at what point is they gonna stop taking the culture from us? That's what we gonna get into, man. Because, hey, man, it's... I don't believe that black culture can just be defined into one thing. And I'm assuming that's what we talk about when we talk about the culture, because it's usually us. I ain't never really heard white people talk about the culture unless they on a Vlad interview or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the only white people I really see, you know, use a co- and, if, and, if, and if that's the case, white people, where y'all culture at, man? Come on now. Come on now. Don't you eat baked beans with toast in the morning? Come on, man. <laughs> Ain't that what they eating? Bangers and mash. <laughs> Big ass sausage. It's potatoes in the morning. Y'all be trying to shit on yourself before 10 a.m. You have to. I feel like that with people that drink coffee too, so I, I can't I can't rule that. But yeah, man, let's get into it, man. We're gonna talk about the culture, man. Right here, English majors. Let's go. The culture. The culture gets a lot of blame, and there's a lot of people that claim the culture. So let's get down to it, man. What's, what really is the culture? And if you ask me personally, I think the culture is divided into a bunch of things. Is there black culture? Yes. And in my opinion, anything can be black culture. But everything can't be black culture. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? I think a lot of things we associate with culture might be some of the detrimental parts of what's going on in our society. And that don't make it our culture because there's such things as subcultures. As you can see on here, what we got? We got the trap, we got strip club, we got rise and grind, we got the cancel culture, we got the cookout. Let's get to it, man. The culture, the cookout, as my understanding, it's a fictitious place that we can invite white people. Like, we don't even go to cookouts no more. Y'all not no cookout people like that. Y'all ain't throwing no meat on the grill. Y'all too busy eating vegetables and shit. You want to have a cookout with eggplant and cauliflower? I don't. Nobody eat the same shit. I don't eat this. I only eat chicken. I only, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never met nobody that only eat pork, though. That's crazy. That is one diet where I don't think you make it long. If you on a strict, strictly just pork diet, I don't think you get past 35, if I'm being honest. But the cookout, come on, let's be real. We're, we're not even going to cookouts. And this imaginary thing that we're inviting white people to, this go back to the black card. Where who is issuing these black cards? What does the black card get you? Because it ain't did shit for me. I pulled my black card. And white people love to say that when you mention something being racist. Here he goes, using the black card. Like shit just opens up for you. Like all of a sudden, we were, <laughs> like all of a sudden, all their arguments are invalid and they just have to bow down to the black card. Fuck, he pulled out that black card. <laughs> Damn it, how many more does he have? I know he can't use it again. You can only use one black card a day. Is No, no, you used your black card earlier when you asked for time off for Kwanzaa. <laughs> That's crazy, stop, man, stop. The black card, I never understood it because what do it get you? What benefit is it? And white people love to throw that on us. Here he goes, pulling the black card. Yeah, because some shit happened to me because I'm black. It's not a card to pull. It's what's actually going on. Hold on, that's my ring camera. Stop that. Put this over there. Let me see who at my house. All right. Yeah, throw the, take that. Appreciate it. We good? And just pick back up? All right. Yeah, man, look. If we being real about any of this stuff, a lot of this stuff ain't us, man. A lot of the negative aspects. The trap culture, that's a whole separate subculture. But that's not just black people. A lot of the negative shit from trap culture, that ain't us. We put our spin on it, but we got that shit from white people. Uh, selling illegal shit, that's bootlegging. That's prohibition, right? Shooting automatic weapons, that's y'all when you got the Tommy gun. I seen them old gangster movies. 
Uh, what is it? Bloody Valentine's or something? The Valentine's Day massacre, all type of shit. Drive-bys, shooting out the whip. That was y'all. When the V8 engine came out, that's how y'all really started getting the prohibition. That's how JFK and them made their money and got to keep their money. We get to, yeah, yeah. We don't get to keep our money. If we made some money doing illegal, they finna get that money from your descendants' descendants' descendant. And they owe us money. So let's be real about the situation. A lot of the negative aspects is not real, man. Strip club, that's a whole nother culture. It's not, it's not black culture. Is it an aspect? Is it one subset? Is it a subculture? Absolutely. Strip club culture is, is great when it is great. It's also an indicator of the economy. When them strippers say people broke, get your shit together. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's how it goes. That's who, that's who it hits first. That's the, that's the indicator. You can look at economists. They don't, they don't swear by it all the way, but they know it's true. When the strippers say they making less than they made last year, hey, you need to listen to them, man. Some of these strippers out there, this bitch, like Warren Buffett. They'll tell you what's going on, because they seen it. They seen it from the BMF days. Ask any stripper, if you can get a stripper to tell you about them BMF days, ask them about the most money they ever been hit with. I seen one girl get hit with a stack of money. He didn't even take the band apart. He hit her so hard, he knocked her off the stage. At this point, I'm like, this ain't, this a carnival. We trying to knock bitches in the dunk tank. That's what it looked like, man. She just trying to strip. Next thing you know, she get hit with so much money, she fell off the stage. So much money, it didn't hurt. You know how much money you got to get hit with for that shit not to hurt? It's a good amount, man. That's what I'm saying, man. Strip club culture, that's where a lot of deals happen. That's how I heard we got the Olympics in 96. That's what I heard. I heard if it wasn't for them goddamn Magic City Wings and motherfuckers going there in the Blue Flame and other places, we would have never got the Olympics in 96. A lot of deals happen in strip clubs. Plus, strip club culture, that's another thing they borrow from. Another thing we're going to have to say is that they take from the culture. Consistently. There's a lot of shit being taken. Listen, white people, this is not an indictment on y'all. This is just... I want y'all to get back to being you. Go back. Stop trying to use our slang. And then you want to fuck it up. Your country songs sound like rap songs now. And then you get mad when Beyonce makes some real country songs. Listen, man. Go back to being y'all. What happened to y'all little catchphrases, man? I don't know when the last time I heard a white man say, that's malarkey. <laughs> Go back to using y'all shit, man. Y'all over here trying to, trying to say the shit we saying, ops and, and all that shit. No. Go back to what you saying. I don't know when the last time I heard a white man say, no shit, Sherlock. That was they won. They used to pop that shit, bro. They was feeling they self. That's when they was at. They, they, hey, y'all ain't been the same since y'all stopped having your own little shit, man. I'm telling you, man. They love to say that. That's a crock of horse shit. A crock? I don't know when the last time I heard somebody say that's a crock of anything. Fucking douchebag. Like, go back to that shit. That's when the economy was better, low key. Y'all talk about uh, make America great again and all this bullshit. The shit wasn't never great. Make the shit all right. It was all right for a little while. Make that shit just all right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Cancel culture. Come on. What are we talking about? People act like cancel culture is a new thing. What is cancel culture? You mean getting fired for some shit you said? That's what cancel culture is? That's what I think it is at this point. You've always been held accountable for whatever the fuck you say or do, but now y'all want to pop shit and then say, well, this cancel culture is getting out of hand. No, you got out of hand. You said some shit that somebody didn't like. I don't think you could be canceled by people. I think you have the ability to come back, but you might lose whatever opportunity you just had. And that's just regular. Y'all ain't never been fired for saying some shit? Y'all ain't really living life. If you ain't never been fired for just saying some shit, I remember they tried to fire my homeboy one time. He came into work late. 
eating an ice cream cone. And they tried to snap on him. I know you didn't come in here late eating an ice cream cone. He was like, it's not like I'm late because of the ice cream. Who would be late for ice cream? He said he had to stop and get his daughter something to eat. And while he was at McDonald's, he grabbed the ice cream. <laughs> they wanted to fire him. You know what he said? He said, y'all eat ice cream. Y'all come in here with Starbucks all the time. They had to let him ride. But did they make a new rule at the restaurant? Yeah. Managers can't eat ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> That's how simple shit is, man. You go get fired for some bullshit. You say some shit, you gonna be held accountable for it. Now, trying to make it seem like the cancel culture, like it's bigger than what it is, I can understand that. I can understand people trying to make it seem like it's a lot of people that care about certain situations. And in reality, that's only the people that have access to the internet and that are on there extra heavy, for the most part. Now, it can be some, you know, some people do need to get canceled, you know? What you do on that video, that shit there, man, hey. Now, getting canceled for what you said, that's one thing, but getting canceled for what you did on film, yeah, that, that might happen. That might happen. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. Act accordingly. You never know when the camera rolling. Be in a hotel room next day, you know you're on CNN. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want, hey, man. You don't want the white people talking about you because they're going to make it sound worse. We already know. Whatever we do, they make it sound way worse. White kids are children up to the age of 28. When a black kid hit 12, he a thug. That's it, plain and simple. We're going to act like it's different metrics. It is. Rise and grind. That's the grind culture, if you don't understand. Which is some bullshit. It's, it's people trying to take your money by telling you to rise and grind and just, just grind and grind. What they're not telling you is they take naps. Motherfuckers that's really making money take a nap. That's how you know you got money. If you can afford to take a nap, you doing all right. So I don't know why all the rich people tell you you got to work 24-7. You only need four hours of sleep. My nigga, you better take a nap. You better take a nap and get refreshed and come back and bounce back. Listen, the real rich people I know, they get up early as fuck. They get up early as hell and they get to work. And they get going. I'm talking about they, they might wake up 5.30. Work out. Go over some shit. But you know what? They ass take a nap by nine. They ass go back to bed and then get up again. Now, that's how you really know you got money. If you can get out to bed, go do some shit, come back, put your pajamas back on, <laughs> and get back in the bed. You change twice a day, you, you on the right path. That's my goal, to live like Mr. Rogers. Come in and put on the same shit, just like I had on. But it's different. Rise and grind culture, hey man, listen. I think also this is where we get scamming culture from. Because everybody want to rise. But they don't really want to grind. But they want the money. And they want it easy. So that's why you see a surplus of motherfuckers ask you if you got a Navy Federal account. Hey, you want to turn 500 into 5,000? Bitch, if that was possible, what the fuck you offering it to me for? If you could turn 500 into 5,000, then, and, and you can, you can, but you're going to have to sell some dope. Or, 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 or another, you're going to have to sell something. It's not just going to be given to you, man. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Let's get back to that, man. We can't be falling for everything. There's only so many new scams out there. Shout out to Nigerians. They stay with the scam. Hey, man, y'all do other shit, too. Y'all make great doctors, great goddamn scientists and other shit, but it just so happened y'all got that scamming down pat. Them Nigerians, they'll steal your identity when they first meet you. He shook my hand. I heard boop. I said, what the fuck was that? He said, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. No. I said, I heard a boop. He said, no, no, no. I don't, I don't know boop. No boop. No, it was a boop. 
Before I got home, my account was already goddamn compromised. They sent me the text message. Whenever I see my account got hacked, I go buy some shit for me too. <laughs> and then I say, I didn't do that. <laughs> you got to send to your house. I don't know what they doing. <laughs> Maybe he felt guilty and wanted to give me a gift. That's what you got to do sometimes. You got to think on your feet, man. You got to be ahead of this shit, man. The culture, man, I, I think the culture in a great place, if we highlight what's beautiful about it, and what's beautiful about it is us, I don't think we just one thing. You know what I'm saying? So when people try to use the culture to say, oh, well, this is the culture, I think a lot of shit is we got to get away from what we consider popular and what we consider the culture. Because a lot of times we'll try to push what's popular on people and say, oh, they not from the culture because they don't like what's pop. Hold on, man. That's a very mainstream ass attitude. You know what I'm saying? Like, the culture for us has never been what the mainstream is. You gotta understand, rap went mainstream a long time ago. I know you think your favorite trap artist is underground and they, you know what I'm saying? No, man. They monetized rap in the 80s. Y'all don't remember that shit? Everything was rapping. White bitches rapping on award shows. <laughs> Motherfuckers rapping in the Pepsi commercial and shit. You know what I'm saying? McDonald's hip hop, they ass off. You know what I'm saying? Trying to appeal to us. So it's been monetized and marketed, but back then they was doing it, it was corny, it was cheesy. And they tried to figure out how can we not make it corny? So let's get in there early where we not just coming and taking from the people, let's get the people early and then we can take from them off top. So I don't like when people say, oh, if you watch this, you not black, oh, you don't do this, you not, a lot of things that we associate with us, it's reasons for it. It's a reason we really only fucking with football and basketball as black people. We ain't seen as many black baseball players and they need to be out there and they great. And we not seen as many black soccer players and they need to be out there, they great. But what's those two sports have in common? The bar for entry is a little higher, man. Not on the skill set, but on the financial aspect. It costs money to play soccer. Why do you think the rest of the world kick our ass in soccer? Because it's the easiest and cheapest sport you can fucking play. All you need is a goddamn ball in a field, a parking lot, whatever the fuck. That's it. That's literally all you need for soccer. That's why, listen, first of all, the, the, the poor people going to excel in sports, period. Because they ain't got shit. You seen Rocky. Remember, he was training when he fought the Russian man, right? He was training. He was running in the mountains, punching me. Right? That, that sounded wild. <laughs> but look, man, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that here with y'all, man. I'm not pausing. If you stop playing, you don't have to pause. That's the problem with y'all. Y'all play too goddamn much. You still giggling, man. Stop playing. You don't have to pause. But he was doing all that shit, remember? Russian man, what he was doing, he was high-tech Gatorade commercial, hooked up to shit, running on a treadmill, working on an elliptical. That ain't for boxing. <laughs> I knew he was gonna get his ass whooped when he was doing aerobics. This motherfucker tripping. Rocky on the mountain about to punch a donkey in the face. You over here on an elliptical. But that's why they good, because they work with less. You understand what I'm saying? Working with less make you adapt to situations. You're not always looking for things to be perfect. You know how to work when things ain't perfect. And that's what it is with soccer, baseball, man, it costs too much. It costs a lot of money to get in these little soccer clubs out here. Then you gotta go out here, then you gotta get on the thing, then you gotta pay for this. Hey man, we, we ain't paying that much for AAU. AAU, yeah, it costs some money. It costs some money, we know. Cause y'all be out there asking for, for little money. No, you ain't on no goddamn team. Big as hell. Talking about you need money so y'all can go to a tournament in Orlando. My nigga, you should be playing for Orlando. As old as you are, you need to be on the Magic. At a certain point, AAU ain't for you, man. Once you start getting dunked on, go ahead and run track. You just get dunked on, hey, that ain't for you. I'm going to say this. But it's just some things about the culture, man. We got to be, you know... We got to be keepers of the culture. What new face say? He a custodian of the culture, right? 
We always talk about gatekeeper. Don't be a gatekeeper. Some shit, we need to keep the gate. Otherwise, the gate going to be fucked up. You're going to be anybody hanging out on the gate. You understand what I'm saying? Just like they say, we the gate rate drug. Yeah, because that's where the weed smokers be at, by the gate. It's a gateway drug. Uh, in the house drug is heroin. You can't do heroin on the gateway now. <laughs> that's one thing you can't do. They doing cocaine in the gateway? Get the fuck away from there. They way too comfortable. They act like laws don't exist. Let me see, we hit everything, we hit the trap culture. Hey man, listen. With the trap culture too, man, I'm gonna say this. Let little kids be little kids, man. All right? We got a lot of little kids out here, drill rappers and, and drilling and killing. And what's the little dude, man? I want him to be successful. I want him to succeed. But some of the shit he's, I'm like, he don't even understand what he talking about. What's the little dude? Gun him down. We going to do 60 fucking miles. You're going to get caught. 60 miles isn't fast. That's how you know you're a child. You think 60 is fast. <laughs> if you go 60 on the interstate in Atlanta, you are getting smashed. Do you understand me? You're going to have to pick up the pace, baby. He thought he was going to get away from the cops going 60. Man, we're going to do 60 fucking miles. 60 fucking miles? You finna go <laughs> do 60 years in jail. And no, I don't want to make fun of kids. I got a child myself. I want them to be smart. But, you know, come on, man. If you're making money, you got to know some math now. I saw it. He didn't, he, didn't know his, he didn't know his little math problems. And they was the easy ones. Everybody know the easy ones. Everybody should know the same plus same. If you don't know seven plus seven, what you doing? You understand what I'm saying? You got to know the same ones. I think they hit them with the, did they hit them with the five plus five? If you don't know five plus five, how are you even in the trap? If one day we got to learn to count, man, at least by fives, that's the easiest way to count. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 20, 20, that, that shit just go, it flow. It's easy, it ain't hard. But we got to be responsible. And we can't say that all this shit is the culture. You understand? Because at a certain point, children making grown up decisions. So you got to ask yourself, who making the decision for them? Hey, it's just something to think about. And I'm not saying he shouldn't be rapping and he should not talk about his experiences. But hey, it's certain things, man. At a certain point, hey, man. People need guidance, man. We can't let everybody go down the... the the wrong path and expect everything to be okay. And then when shit happened, oh, how did this happen? Why is he? Because this is what he been shown the entire time. Look, it's like this, man. The culture is us. Everything ain't the culture, but at the end of the day, the culture is us. So respect the culture like you respect your people. And we expect people to treat our culture with respect because at the end of the day, the biggest export from our culture is the people. I want you to think about all the shit we have that came just from black people being great at shit. They didn't want us to be good at basketball. That was a white man game. Canadian man, throw the ball in a peach basket. Every rule seemed like they changed it because black people started playing. That goal wasn't 10 feet at first. We came and that bitch started dunking that bitch. They was like, no, change it. Lift it up. It's too low. At first, they didn't even dribble. They just ran around and threw that bitch in there. <laughs> we started coming. We was too fast. We took off. They said, no, you, you, no, you, you have to bounce it. You have to bounce it next to you. And you can only take two steps. That's it. That's it. Bounce it next to you. Take two steps. It seemed like every rule was made because we was too good at what happened if you hit somebody. You know we strong. So we out there, what they came out with, foul, no, no. I get to shoot it and nobody can be around me. You guys have to stand over there and, and you can't move until it, no, I get to shoot it from here. That's, it, it, I love to see that shit. Cause watching the NBA, it, if you watch a lot of the games, now we got more black coaches, but it used to for a little while, it just looked like white men in suits, mad that black people was as athletic as they were. Like, if you just watch it with no sound, it's a white man in a suit. 
mad. And black people having more fun than a little bit. Sometimes you gotta find a little joy and shit, man. I told y'all, sometimes I watch Django and then I watch The Revenant right after and pretend like it's the same movie. Remember when that bear fucked him up? Yeah. You pretend like he the racist man from Django? It, it's got a whole different feel to it. Yeah, you gotta check that shit out. It's a good double feature, man. Just going through what we heard, man, what we seen. Sometimes you go down your timeline and you scroll and you see stuff and we just gotta address it. We gotta talk about it, man. If we talking about the culture, then what's bigger than the culture, man? We got a whole HBCU culture, man. Shout out to all my HBCUs. I went to FAMU, didn't graduate, but that's not the point. That's neither here nor there. HBCUs, rich culture, man, produce a lot of black judges, a lot of black doctors, a lot of black lawyers, a lot of black professionals, period. And um, like I said, even if you didn't graduate, you learned something from an HBCU. And it's one of those situations, kind of what I talked about earlier, where you learn with a lack of resources. You know going to an HBCU, they got some great programs, they got some great teachers, but also it's going to be some things that they're going to fall short on. Mainly probably the infrastructure, anemones, whatever you want to call it. But what we found out is, man, the Fed, the federal government is saying that states owe HBCUs over $2 billion. $2 billion. Supposedly, when HBCUs first came about, most states had a chance to decide, hey, either you can let black people go to school or you can make a separate school for them. We know they chose in the South. That's why we got HBCUs, and mostly all of them are in the South. So when they did that, they were supposed to get a land grant where they got the same amount of money that the predominantly white institutions got. However, that's not what they got, man. That's not what they got. And they saying they owe $2 billion and they got records going back to the 50s. My thing is, how did it take y'all this long to realize that money was owed? Like, black people never get, like... And then they look at us like, why do y'all need HBCUs? I love that, that topic white people say, isn't that racist to have an HBCU? Uh, bitch, wasn't it racist we had to create one, you dumb ass? Don't you know the real, you think we just was like, you know what, fuck it, let's do our own schools. Which we probably should have did. But no, that was forced upon us because we weren't allowed to go to other institutions that would allow us to learn. That's why it's called the HBCU, Historically Black College or University. It's not a modern day black college, like, Dumbass, it's a st and it's not just black people that go there. You do know this. Like, it's still a school in whatever state it is in. Even though it's an historically black college, and the majority of the people there may be black people, it's white people that go to HBCUs. Fam, you, we had a white dude on, on, on golf scholarship. You got to get who you can get. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to win. It's all types of people go to HBCUs. Shout out my Indian people. Go to HBCUs and learn shit. What's up, y'all? Ain't that what y'all... I don't know what that mean. Hopefully, I didn't offend nobody. But y'all know what that is. They be doing that shit. That, shout out to all my Asian people go to HBCUs. Hispanic people, Latino people, people from overseas, man. It's all type of people going there. And so, it's not just black people that's being affected by this. You're probably affecting the whole state. The people, and then, this is what they also love to say. Black people don't like to give back to HBCUs. I've heard that. I've heard that black people don't like to give back to HBCUs. The alumni don't like to give back to HBCUs. Yeah, because we know y'all got some money y'all ain't give us in the first place. Give us the money first, and then we can start talking about giving back. Why we got to give back to get the shit we supposed to already have. Do you understand what I'm saying? That doesn't make sense, man. Hey, shout out to all my HBCUs across the board. I hope they get their money. I hope they get their money and put it into stuff, man. I, I don't know. We not gonna see the money, but the question is, where did the money go? Where did the money go? And what the fuck going on with Brett Favre? Didn't he jot down 
take all Mississippi little money for, for, for a daughter's volleyball court? Bitch, that don't cost that much. Brett Favre, you ain't got no money for a volleyball court? All them goddamn years you played, all them Wrangler jeans commercials. Motherfucker play football in the field with horses wearing Wrangler jeans. But he ain't got enough money for a goddamn volleyball. Volleyball don't need no stadium. Volleyball, last I checked, you need some sand around that bitch. Either sand or you play that bitch on somebody's basketball court. Fuck they need a facility for. Shit don't even make sense. Shit just being greedy, man. And look at and let's and let's just let's let's call it what it is, man. Let's look and see how that Brett Favre case is being treated in the media compared to how black people getting treated in the media. We still ten dollars. We on we on that front page. I ain't seen Brett Favre walk nowhere. He ain't had to go to no courthouse. He ain't had to. You know what I'm saying? He ain't had to do a little perp walk. You know they 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 gonna walk us, bro. They gonna walk us. They they search Diddy House. They put the kids outside. I said, God damn, man. I seen a French bulldog in handcuffs. I said, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. They dog, they, they arms aren't even supposed to reach behind them. You done heard of like normally y'all care about animals. Listen, man, we're gonna keep this shit moving. Shout out Tyrese. You ran from that process server. You should have did that, my boy. Shout out Tyrese. Tyrese always got some problems, man. Tyrese always got some shit going on, man. We forget how great he is. He a great singer, good ass actor, man. Say what you want about Baby Boy. It was, it was, it was, it was straight. It was straight. After about that third time, it grew on you a little bit more. I just ain't like the part where he was in the womb. That's crazy. Like there was no need for that. Like I would have questioned that if I was Tyrese. So you want me to get naked and be in a fake baby? Womb? Like we could write this part out. Like, write this part out, but hey, Tyrese, man. What more do you want from me? Like, they be putting you through it, brother. They putting you through it, but you did the right shit. And it's crazy that you were singing why you want to act like that. Because why do she want to act like that, bro? What did you do? You can't run from that shit, though. They going to catch up with you when you least expect it. The motherfucker going to be in, in your car already with the paperwork. Motherfucker go get on the same flight as you and hand you that shit in the air where you ain't got nowhere to go. Now, unless you go pull some Fast and Furious shit and jump out that goddamn plane, you go be in that courthouse, man. Didn't Tyrese have a Benny Hanna in his house? What happened to the shows that used to show us the celebrities' households? Yeah, we ain't got no more cribs. Yeah, no more goddamn. I guess people want to stop showing their house once their house started getting broken into. Like, that, that's another thing. That was a, and then also everybody on Cribs, that wasn't their house. Except for Red Man, that was his house. That's still his house. I'd be damned. Word trip? Oh, we got HDGD, you know, black people, we doing that. We flipping houses now. Shout out to everybody trying to, trying to, make a tiny home community. <laughs> they ain't trying to sell you on them tiny homes. Tiny home, the price don't be tiny, though. That's the crazy part. What the hell is we doing? I'm going to live in a container home. Now we just making up shit. I'm going to live in a container. A cont All right, well, I'm going to live in an old submarine. How about that? Since we just doing shit, I can't, I can't live in an old Toys R Us. I'm just saying, it's a lot of Toys R Us closed down. What they just go do, be Spirit Halloween stores one month? For one month. I think Spirit Halloween stores are a real scam too, though. I'm going to say that. I don't think they pay rent wherever they at. I sign a lease and leave <laughs> for a month. That's it. That's it. They really squatting. Shout out to people that be squatting and get to stay there. If you can make it work, hey, you squat in my property, though, oh, you gonna have some goddamn problems. I'm gonna come in that bitch with four Rottweilers and just let them loose. <laughs> now, if you can, you, can, you, you can beat them, you can stay. But if they take a chunk out your ass, now, hey, come on now. You gotta come on out here now. 
I'm not having it, man. You're not going to get over on me. That, that's real. And white people, if you gentrify in the community, please realize you're not going to scare us. Trying to paint your house a scary color, bitch. You ain't seen this shit? You ain't seen the white people? They paint the shit all black and shit, this goth and bitch. What are you doing? You gonna paint your house like the Adams Family, like it's gonna <laughs> scare us away. Oh no, it's haunted. Bitch, it was a crack house before. <laughs> Motherfuckers got shot daily at this bitch. We had, we, bro, just because you painted this bitch like Beetlejuice house, you think you gonna run us off? No, stop it. And hey, hey, start being a part of the community. That way you know what's going on. Talk to them crackheads. Give them a little job. Let them cut your yard. Don't give them no key now. Now that's crazy. You know, you, all, you know. And pay them after they do the shit. Never give them the money up front. That's just a little life advice. Crackhead, you got to give them a little down payment and then promise them some more money. And they'll usually, they'll carry that shit out. Unless he did already hit his quota. Like, if he got the money for the rock, if he got the money for the rock, what Henry Wells said, what one crackhead say to the other? <laughs> I want to rock right now. Shout out to Henry Welch, man. That boy's stupid. That shit used to always make me laugh, man. Hey, that's one thing I'm going to do on here, too, man. I got to shout out comedians, man. Whenever you hear something, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like sometimes in this day and age, people just want to say the shit and run off with it. But if you know who the fuck said it and made you laugh when they said it, say they motherfucking name. It ain't that hard, man. Appreciate it, but I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm giving you, giving you life advice. White people, stop trying to adopt all the animals, too, all right? That's how you know a bad community. We know this, right? If you see stray animals, that's the hood. Any full-grown stray animal, that's the hood. Pit bulls with big nipples, that's the hood. You understand? Dogs that know how to cross the street and shit. You know what I'm saying? Dogs that got them wait outside the store. If a dog asks you for a cigarette, you in the hood. You understand? German Shepherd said, let me get that short one time. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> white people ain't no full-grown animals. If, you, if they see, this is also a very white person thing. I was on the phone with a white dude. He a British white man. We on the phone discussing business. He hit me with the whitest shit ever I ever heard in my life. He said, Clayton, hold on. It's two dogs in the street. I'm going to go out there and make sure they don't get hit. <laughs> That's something you'll never hear a black person say. We will say it's two dogs in the street. One of them bitches about to get hit. That, we'll say that. <laughs> but we're not stopping what we doing to go get the dog from... Like, come on, man. That's why y'all be fucked up. Be adopting shit that ain't adoptable. Talk about you done adopted a goddamn, I think he's a cane corso. Bitch, that's a hyena. That's the most powerful bite force in the animal kingdom, you dummy. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Y'all see the shit? What was it? House of Representatives? Congress? I always get them confused. House of Representatives, Marjorie Taylor Greene. She was on your ass, boy. They was like, this is what I like to see, man. This is the culture. Roast culture? Bring that shit to politics. Donald Trump do it, but it be, it be, it's corny. It's still corny. He be thinking he's saying shit, too. He really be thinking he getting shit off. Well, I don't know. We have to see. Maybe, maybe he's, he's, he's tired. Like, it's, it's weak, but they was swinging on this shit. Marjorie Taylor Greene tried to tell Jasmine Crockett, I don't know, maybe you can't see because your eyelashes. Oh, let's go. <laughs> we cracking like that? How did Jasmine Crockett came back? How did she come back? She said, so if I was to call her a bleach, blonde, bad built, butch, bi I was like, whoa. The white man was like, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> I was like, let them go. Let them go. This is the shit we need in politics, man. Stop all that respectability. Y'all ain't being respectable. Y'all weren't respectable when goddamn uh, Obama was in there. Respectability politics. All that shit went out the window. 
Fuck the respect. Talk that shit. That's what I want to see. I want to see good ass roasted. Oh, bad built, bleach blind, bad body, butch, big head, little feet. Like, yeah, I'm voting for you. You're going to win the debate if you come with that energy. Shout out to Red Grant. He running for some government shit, man. That's what I want to see, man. I want to see that type of shit in the government. Talking shit. We should treat our government like other places. You seen England? Oh, they pop shit. Them Asian countries, they get to fighting. Oh, yeah. You ain't never seen somebody get snap, drag, and kick on the floor of the goddamn House of Representatives. Oh, fucker got hit with the Liu Kang. Them other countries, they be scrapping. I love to see it, man. I think that's how we could really get some political shit done, man. It's a bunch of people that don't do shit, bro. And they could talk shit because they ain't never been in fights. I think if you in the government, you need to, like, the first day they, they would, they, would they swear you in? Or they, you, they put your hand on the Bible? And after that, they should slap the shit out you. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> just so you know. Like, just so you know what it feels like. It's going to keep you, it's going to keep you in check. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, damn, that's what it feels like to, to, to get slapped in the goddamn mouth. Let me, let me not just say whatever the fuck I want to say because this is an option that could actually happen. I think people don't realize that shit real. So from now on, if you in the government, hand on the Bible, swear in, and then put that hand down, whack, and take that shit, man. Take that shit. We'll, we'll get some respectability in you. I guarantee you folks wouldn't pop the shit they would if, if motherfuckers actually got hit in the goddamn face. You ever see how politicians act when they get hit with anything? An egg. Motherfucker throw a pie at them. Oh, them motherfuckers. <laughs> them motherfuckers. Ah! <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. And that's just food, dummy. You hope it's food. Motherfucker hit you with a bag full of piss. They do that too now. <laughs> oh, they do that shit too. I just want shit to be right for us, man. I be fighting for black people right. Not no more. I used to. I used to go out and be at the margins. I fight from afar now. They arrested my black ass. That shit set me down. Go watch that episode. It's a full story on it. Maybe I'll do a story time on that. I'm not doing it today because it make me relive trauma. You know what I'm saying? Traumatic experiences. And I was out there in L.A., and white people, y'all was looting, too. Y'all was looting. Y'all was the main ones. Y'all was stealing shit. Every time I saw a white person with an arm full of shit, I said, come on. Give me something. What you got? <laughs> you know why you out here, boy? This because of us, boy. Give me one. Give me one of them Supreme shirts. Yeah, I was coming up with all type of little bullshit. I was getting shit that wasn't even my size. Give me, that, give me that Hello Kitty jacket. Give a fuck. Give me something. <laughs> Take it, anything, everything. Plus, the older you get, you can't be out there with the... You, you can go protest, but then you got to go home. The looting star, you, you know what I'm saying? You can't be out there looting and you tear your meniscus. You know what I'm saying? You got an old person problem out there. You out there tripping. You slip a disc. Now you got to lay down in the middle of the protest next to a burning car. <laughs> you looking up at the sky. You the only motherfucker to get arrested. Because <laughs> you couldn't go nowhere. Oh, last thing last, man. Um, what y'all think about the teacher that was getting his hair braided? And this is, this is sound off in the comments too, man, but... I don't know, man. You really can't be a man, and you can't have a, anything you do with underage girls ain't gonna look right, bro. Short of you doing double dutch with them, that's about the only thing you. Get. 
Like, if you jump in that bitch and get, nobody will be like, he trying to get on them young women. No, no. Like, that's the one that give you a pass. But as soon as they saw them taking his hair down, you know, they know what it was and, or what they thought it was. And low key, that, that's my man's fault. Everything ain't gotta be broadcast. You got your students to help you take your hair down. I'm gonna leave it at that and say that that's all you was goddamn doing because that's all we saw you goddamn doing. And them students ain't say shit otherwise. So I respect that, but that's on you, buddy. You a teacher, teach. You ain't learned shit, don't put everything on the goddamn internet. When you knew you needed your hair down and, and the girls was like, you want us to take your hair down? But you should have said, yeah, and ended your goddamn video. But you trying to so show shit. I don't know what your caption said. Your caption could have been crazy. That might have been the problem. Got these bitches taking my hair down. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, man, that's somebody's daughter, man. <laughs> you, bro, no wonder. <laughs> You gotta be careful with your caption. You know what I'm saying? You trying to pop shit, make it seem like you got shit going on. My girls take care of me. Them ain't your girls. <laughs> they got on school uniforms, man. Stop. Teachers do too much nowadays. This shit out of hand. I saw one teacher, she posted a picture of her ass, and she said, y'all think my 10th graders be looking at me. Huh? It ain't that fat. It's all right. I mean, in 10th grade, you gonna look. <laughs> Any ass on a teacher is gonna get looked at in school just because it's not, I don't know, nowadays, these teachers be slugging. They got damn beat, you know what I'm saying? These teachers have, come on now. Ma'am, I'm just saying, you gotta, you, y'all can't be dressing for the Instagram and shit too, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I get it, y'all thirst trapping, but it's kid, but. These teachers be fucking the kids. Most of the time it's women that I'm seeing. Now I know the men do it too, we not gonna, we not gonna act like that, but as of late I've seen a large number of women getting caught fucking with students. So that just show you that women, y'all gotta be on that bullshit. Cause you can't want to do them with money and you fucking high school. A nigga fucking you off two taquitos and chocolate milk. That's. <laughs> that man ate a, <laughs> that man ate a country fried steak <laughs> and two percent milk. <laughs> and he stayed out to school to take you down. <laughs> That's just pure, you know what I'm saying? Like, at that age, pussy exciting. It's exciting. You understand? So they not go, you never gonna hear the young dude be like, wait, you're my teacher. Like, that's like. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Miss Johnson? <laughs> I said I needed tutoring. This isn't what I meant. <laughs> hey, and it might happen too, but I'm just saying, most of the time, like, it's not even an option for a dude that age that, you, you understand? I'm trying to make sense of it. I don't know. Let, let's, let's get a little app or something for the teachers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, freakyteach.com. Something, I don't know. Teacher Freak. We get Petey Pablo to do a song for a teacher freak. Math class, social studies. Teacher Freak. Yeah. Nah, but for real, ladies, teachers, if y'all, listen, listen. There's some dudes out there that ain't shit. They ate two taquitos. And they not in school. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, like, you never have to, like, all right. Just fuck with your age or fuck with some, that's, all right, yeah. Fuck with people that's grown. That's all we gonna say. We'll leave it at that. I'm sure this, this topic is gonna come up again and again, but hey, man. 
And if you a young dude out there and you think about fucking your teacher, don't. The pussy ain't that good. She would be fucking a grown person if she could. She ain't got nobody calling her. <laughs> she sitting up here talking with you about anime and shit. She don't like that shit. She just trying to get some dick, man. If she had good pussy, she wouldn't have to be at the school trying to see what's up. Now, if you feel a way about that, we know why. No, I'm just <laughs> But yeah, the teacher's tripping. That's all I'm going to say, man. When I was in school, uh, yeah, who was no teachers that you really wanted to, to knock down? Like, not like that. Like, teachers used to be teachery. Like, you know what I'm saying? They used to be real teachery. Breath stank, everything. You saw a little dude got in trouble for saying his teacher breath stank. And then they zoomed in on her teeth, and, and you realize, yeah, she had. <laughs> hey, man, little kids not going to lie to you like that, bro. We just, they just ain't got no, they ain't got no better sense, man. But she needed to know that. Nobody was telling her that. I had a teacher who breath stank. She talking about why I'm falling behind. I said, bitch. <laughs> See, it's hard to, for me to look in your direction, uh, let alone you spewing toxic bullshit. All right, we out of here, man. We, we talked about, I think, everything uh, that we could talk about, everything that I've seen scrolling through, everything I've seen scrolling down. Oh, people to leave alone. Mike Tyson, he's supposed to fight the, the boy, the white boy. Don't, don't do that. If you can get out, get out of that. Get out of that. You don't want Tyson to have a flashback. He go back to the dude that killed his pigeon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, you don't want that ass whoop. That's the ass whooping that sparked a career. You know how many people have made a career off of a ass whooping? It's not a lot. I expected a lot from some of them internet videos. They never really, you know what I'm saying? Sharkeisha, I expected her to do something. But you ain't finna do shit, man. Mike Tyson? Come on, man. He old, but he... I seen, I seen him throw punches. Like, he said this shit one time, it fucked me up. He said, my goal is to throw punches in bunches. <laughs> a bunch of punches, bruh? No, you know how hard it is to take a punch? And then boxing, one of the hardest sports, because you got to get hit in the face and then get better. That's crazy. If I get hit in the face, whatever I'm doing, I'm not going to do it better. I don't give a fuck what it is. If I'm cooking and you slap me in the face, hey, I'm going to order something to eat. I'm done cooking. Crazy shit is, man. It's going to keep happening. So... We gonna see. Let's see how this go and come back. English majors, drop what you wanna see. Drop any topic you might have seen. Let us know your scroll downs. Let us know the rundown. Let's go. Hey man, it's summertime, man. You, you, I hope you're feeling like a winner, man. If you're not feeling like a winner, it might be because you're not on prize picks, man. Look, you got the MMA, PGA, MLB, WNBA, and you might even get in on the little slap box, you know what I'm saying, the ultimate slap. You know what I'm saying? Each day there's a chance for you to add more money to the bank. Go ahead, put your entries in. Put your initial deposit in. Prize picks is going to match it up to $100, man. All you got to do is register, deposit, and select more or less on two to six player stats like points, assists, rebounds, whatever. Potentially win up to 25 times your entry. And if it's your first time, like I said, they're going to match your initial deposit up to $100. It's available in over 30 states, man. Head to Prize Picks now and use promo code ENGLISHMAJOR. And tell them I sent you. So go right now. Download Prize Picks today and your daily fantasy sports experience begins, man. Prize Picks, daily fantasy made easy. Y'all know what time it is, man. It's office hours, man. 
this is when you get a chance to come into the office and uh, ask me whatever you want to ask me, man. It's a Q&A session, but ain't no answers. It's just advice. You can take it. A lot of times, advice is just to hear a different perspective. So that's what I'm here to give you. You ask your question, however you may ask. Uh, email, comments, uh, DMs, uh, send in. You can actually send a letter, right? Right, people really sending letters. Still sending letters <laughs> through the mail. Yeah, they'll send it, and I'll put it right here in this drawer, and we'll read it right here, all right? So look, let's get it started. Let's see, we got one, all right. Okay, we got my man Curtis from Culver City. Okay, Culver City, California, let's get it. He said, hey, Clayton, we see other cultures take from us. Are there some things from other cultures you think it's time for black folk to take from other cultures? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You better, we better. I think we already doing it. We already doing it. We done did it a few times, but we we doing, we definitely doing it with food. We tripping. Oh, we is fucking these egg rolls up. This was, oh man, this is not what General Sal went to war for. You understand? This, no, Benny Hanna would be mad than a bitch if he saw what we doing with these egg rolls. Macaroni and cheese in the egg roll, collard green with yams in a rib. Put a rib in an egg roll? That's crazy. That's crazy. Egg rolls was already kind of black because they was mostly cabbage. And I don't think white people eat cabbage, not like that. Like, they eat coleslaw, but they don't be eating no, like, they ain't putting no cabbage on the pot. <laughs> you ain't never heard a white person, I gotta go check on my cabbage. If they do, it's in a garden somewhere, that kind of cabbage. <laughs> gotta make sure the rabbits don't eat my cabbage. Like, yeah, that's what you're going through. But yeah, it's stuff we definitely need to take from other cultures. We done did it a few times. Uh, we did it a little bit with the, with the, with the kung fu. We did it. We did it a little bit. Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. They, they took that shit up through there. And they forever loved over in Asia. So we do it a few times, man. They had, you know, the 70s, they had the little black exploitation kung fu movies. You know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about Dolomite. I don't know what kind of kung fu that was, man. <laughs> Dolomite was a fool with his shit. Um, what else we taking? What else we taking? Huh? Cinco de Mayo? Oh, man, y'all just started drinking that Casa Migos, man. Them Casa Negros went crazy, man. <laughs> that Casa Negros had y'all in the chokehold. Now nah, it's just the carry though. Man, we don't even, that ain't even really, that's Mexican Independence Day, but if you talk to the Mexicans, they be like, it ain't the real one. It ain't the real one. It's like one they, they put on. I say, hey, man, I didn't know. I just wanted some fajitas. You know what I'm saying? Like, make some of that shit, Ray. We taking burrilla tacos. They putting burrilla in ramen. That's two, that's two cultures converging together that wouldn't have been brought together probably without us. You understand what I'm saying? I don't even know if Mexican people and Asian people get along. I'm here to bridge that gap. Because I think y'all can have some fat shit if y'all really work at it. You know what I'm saying? We gonna take y'all music too. We take it, y'all take our music. Y'all seen the Japanese girl I showed you? Can I find that? Can we find that where she was rapping like Project Pat? That's crazy, because that's a specific flow. What else we need to take? Anything else? From white people, we got to take some shit from them, too. We've been taking, we, we got a little country takeover, but country ain't y'all's. We just really came back and got it. Because country was R&B. That all came from that, man. If we even talking about the instruments, the instruments came from us. Y'all wasn't playing no banjo? We came with the banjo. First of all, we came from the shit with Africa, with the kalimba, right? Ain't that what it's called? Did I say it wrong? Somebody go correct me, man. And yeah, look at you. You lost. Shit, I don't know what that shit is. Yeah, that's right. See? Good. Sometimes I just be happy that, that you know, through the weed smoke, I still retain some of this shit. <laughs> that, I, that's what I'm impressed with. It's not that I know the word. It's that I can find it. 
That's the crazy part. Okay, so, yeah. It was a period. The banjo was pretty much exclusively like a black instrument. We was the only ones that played that shit. Then it got to the point they picked it up and then they act like we ain't never had. Nah, man. We been here roots and this. What we gonna take from white people? I don't know. I don't want. I don't want none of that shit. And they food? No. What we finna do? No. What, toast and beans? Ain't that what we said? No, nah, man. Get out of here. What can we take? We gotta take that Wall Street shit from them. Shout out to all the people I fuck with out there on that end, man. EYL, uh, you know what I'm saying? My man, uh, Red Pan, uh, Wall Street Trapper. That's where we gotta get in. We gotta get in that. And I think we doing that a little bit. Cause that's the shit, man. We would have been hell in the 80s in the stock market. Like all that shit going on. Remember when the white dudes be in there yelling with their piece of paper? Hey, man, let me get this same shit. And they had, they had trouble communicating through the whole little floor. You know, they couldn't even communicate like that. That's why they had the phones, and then that's when the cell phone came. You get, bruh, let us go in there, man. Let's, it would have been some black dudes off the block from the 80s. In there in the Wall Street shit. Oh, man, they be communicating all across that shit. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey. They know to buy, sell. It be little shit. Uh. <laughs> Motherfucker be up. We would have been running that shit. That's what, we, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we got to take some of that shit. Some of that money-making shit we got to get. We got to get to. Yeah. All right, what we got next? When this came straight from, this was on Instagram. This is where they asked me this. They said, okay, uh, we all know ATL is known for wings and the strip clubs. What's the best two-piece combo, strip club and wing spot? Okay, so if we just talking about strip club that's got wings, go to Magic City. Blue Flame also. Like, that Blue Flame kitchen be, be pumping. But Magic City got a little more notoriety. It's a little, it's like its own separate. You can Uber Eats Magic City wings. You know what I'm saying? That Lou Will flavor, he made him famous when he came, when he was in the bubble, but the flavor actually go. It, he made it famous to y'all. We was already, yeah, we already knew. But if we talking straight up just wings, like a place that's got wings, B&L. B&L wings. You can argue in the goddamn comments. What you gonna say gonna beat them? Who got them? Who beat them? American Deli, that's your favorite? That just show you ain't never been nowhere but up the street by what's by you. You just go to what's by you. It's good by you, but it's better shit. It's better shit. American Deli, cool, it all, you know. JJ's, that's that Chicago style. They cool too. And I like that they don't step on their chicken wings. They chicken wings ain't stepped on, man. Most chicken wings are stepped on. You know what I'm talking about. Like, they broke the, the wing drums and flats. That's one wing. They go together. Some of y'all didn't know that. I seen some girl on the internet yesterday. She said she didn't know she could eat the skin off the chicken. So I know some of y'all ain't know <laughs> that the wing and the drum is connected. That's the whole wing. That's how wing's supposed to be. So a 20-piece is really 10. Come on, man. How much more are you gonna step on it? How much more can you cut the chicken? That's what I'm saying. They gonna take the meat from the bone. They gonna sell the bone separate. You dip the bone in the meat. The bone got the sauce on it though, so you dip the bone in the meat and that. That's a 38 piece. You gonna count the individual shreds of chicken next? Come on, man. Get the wing size. Like, let's get the sizes straight. Either they too big or too little. J.R. Crickets, I'm looking at y'all, man. Y'all had little wings for the longest. I think y'all finally ran out them little wings. I'm so glad that y'all got wings that's at least somewhat normal. At a certain point, you start asking, what bird? What bird? This is a quail. It's got to be a quail. It got, and in some places, it's too big. It's, it's too chunky. This shit is an armpit. This bitch need deodorant. I got chicken wings that was musty. 
That's a big ass wing, man. What this came off of? An emu? Y'all ain't never seen an emu. Look it up. I seen an emu on the side of the road one time. And to tell you how bad my fucking vision was, I saw it a long ways off. But the way emus walked, I thought it was a woman. I thought it was, I thought, I thought, I was like, it's a lady up there with a fat ass walking <laughs> slow along the highway. Like, but you know, I'm driving for a minute before I get up there. You know how when you see shit and it's blurry, it ain't all the way clear yet. And as I'm getting up, I'm like, damn, this is a big bitch. Like, and then I get up, I'm like, oh, this is a goddamn emu on the side of the road, South Carolina. I don't know. I, if I wasn't with nobody, I wouldn't have believed it myself. I was like, did you see that shit? And he was like, hell yeah. I was like, okay, cool. He was like, I thought it was a bitch. I was like, me too. I thought it was. That's how you know you ain't shit. Looking for ass on the side of the road. Supposed to be going to do a show. Almost gave that emu a ride. The way that bitch winked at me when I drove past, I said, fuck it. I, you know. I, know. I mean, you know, emu ain't really supposed to be out here like that, just walking around. <laughs> Y'all dumb. This is what I'm saying, man. Um, best wing spots, it's, it's really up to you, man. It's what you, but I, I, hey, I'm gonna put B&L at the top of the list. I don't know, they probably got a little thing out there you can Google, they probably ranking wings. You said ATL not a wing city, though. That's what you said. That's how you feel. So ATL not known for wings it, at all, is in your opinion. You ain't had no good wings. They all right, they straight. Okay, so you, you're the size. But you 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 like lemon pepper dry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're you crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you, like, lemon pepper dry? The ones that cut the side of your mouth and make... You like the corners of your mouth to burn when you eat food. That's... You get dry with lemon pepper sprinkles. I seen the order. That's crazy. That's why every time you eat wings, we be like, do like this. <laughs> every time you eat wings, everybody, hey, do like this. Come here. Go like this. You got wings all on your mouth. <laughs> you get it wet, that don't happen. You get the dry. That's, that's, that's why you're not, probably, probably. You're not even dabbling in sauce. <laughs> she probably thinks they wet them with water. I don't want my wings wet. <laughs> what do you mean, boiled? No. No. You, you, you doing it. You get to dry. You know I'm right because the, the corners of your mouth hurt. Dry lemon pepper eaters. <laughs> to, see? They calling in. They calling in right now. Yeah, I was stupid, man. Yeah, you not eat. Maybe, and sometimes if stuff ain't good to you, you might not be eating it right. There's certain stuff you're not eating right. Some stuff you got to eat right there. Right now. Right in the car. Ain't no waiting to get home. You wait to get home, it's done. In and out, fries, got to eat them right there. Chick-fil-A, really? If it's in that little pouch? They put that bitch in that little tinfoil pocket. You finna have a wet sandwich when you get home. <laughs> Your sandwich gonna be moist and ready. That ain't what you wanted. Ain't no more crispiness. Ain't no more crispiness. Some shit you gotta eat right then. Little Caesars, this gotta go right now. Little Caesars gotta go right now. I hate how people talk about Little Caesars too. Like people be like, I don't like their pizza, but they cheesy bread good. Bitch, it's the same ingredients. You think they use different dough for the cheesy bread? You dumbass. No, man. You like it. You like it. You just got to eat it right then. Little Caesars, you got to eat it. Little Caesars is a drug front. I don't know if you know this. None of them are big enough to really eat in. They don't want you in there. They made a little uh, hot refrigerator for you to just go grab a pizza. <laughs> They got a hot refrigerator. That's the craziest shit I ever seen. And you just go pick up your pizza, take it, and run up out that bitch. Hot and ready. That's what they call it. $5. Just, hey. 
And if you got to wait for us pizza at Little Caesars, you almost don't want it no more. Y'all, yeah, I, I got to wait. 15 minutes at Little Caesars is an eternity. <laughs> Certain places, it's just too long to wait now. I'm not waiting no 15 minutes at Little Caesars. Plus, it's usually the neighborhood ain't the best. Little Caesars fucked up. That's a little trap house. It is. I looked it up. They actually, the company make money by being a distribution. Like, center. they distribute food for other restaurants. So even if you don't eat Little Caesars, your ass eat Little Caesars. That American Deli shit, that came from Little Caesars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that you love so much. Them little dry lemon pepper wings that you be snacking on. Them straight, them, them straight from Pizza Pizza. Them Little Caesar wings. Yeah. That's what I found out. They make all their money from the distribution shit, and they not even like, yeah. This, see, I just be learning random shit. Sometimes you get on that rabbit hole. That's what ADD do for you. Come on, man. What we got? We got more office hours, questions. Let's go. What you got for me? Hey, Clayton. All right, so boom. First, congrats on your new show. I've been following you since the beginning. I'm a true 85 percenter. She put that in parentheses. In parentheses? Yeah, I'm a that true. Mean it's, that means she, she lying or that's the truth? <laughs> no, it just means that she just put it in there. She put, I'm a true 85 percenter. So my brother is my best friend. We are three years apart and grew up really close. That's my nigga for real, for real. But lately, he been tripping. So he's been dating this new girl who's pretty cool and nice. And all that shit, but the one thing about it that, that's the kill, she's white. I mean, she's cool and I like her and the family kind of accepted her. But we all literally thought this was just a snow bunny phase that he was going through, like that he wasn't going to like, like her for real. And now this nigga's talking about he in love and blah, blah. And he thinking about marrying her. That's when I lost it. I get it. Love is love, but but like we straight niggas. A white sister-in-law is crazy. We are all trying to save him, but I don't know what he's thinking. Please send help. Taylor from Little Rock. Hey, man. I'm not going to knock however anybody want to do anything. You got to let your brother go if that's what he want to do. You don't know. I mean, you don't know what he might see. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. Maybe he like mayonnaise more than you thought. I don't know. I'm just playing. But he might be trying to make a Patrick Mahomes, man. All the good, all the all the sports. Hey, there's some superstars out there if you if you mix it right. I don't know. He might be trying to see what he could do. You know what I'm saying? Let him cook. Let him whip something up in the lab. You know what I'm saying? As long as she's respectful and you know. People gonna love who they love or be with who they wanna be with. And uh, you know, you know, black people, we do shit like this. Well, she got money. That's that's black people. You know what I'm saying? Like we, but do let him do that. And it's gonna be certain shit she not gonna get, and it's gonna be certain shit she get, but you're gonna have to figure out a relationship so you can let her know. You wanna be good enough with her so you can be like, hey, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Don't, you can't, you can't say that shit around, uh, you know, grandma. You can't do that. You can't fuck this food up. You can't, you, you understand? Like, you need somebody to be in her corner. Otherwise, it is going to be chaos. So that's probably going to have to be you. If you close with your brother, man, you got to help him make it work out. You know, don't be trying to do, you know, the shit and, you know, put the white girl on blast and shit and asking her tough questions in front of people. You know what I'm saying? Look up a last name, though. See if they own slaves. And then <laughs> I'm just, what I'm saying is, like, at least know who she come from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all need more advice? Hey, man, I don't know if I got any more help, man. I'm trying to. Help the world with race relations. Listen, man, uh, white people that's watching this, y'all probably not the problem. <laughs> 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 like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can say all this shit, but I mean, I think y'all probably the ones that's like, you know what I'm saying? Fuck wittable. You know what I'm saying? So talk to the other ones. You know what I'm saying? I love when I see the white dudes on, on the IG or the white lady when they when they call out the racism and 
and bullshit. I, I like I like seeing that. I like, because that means y'all see it and y'all have seen it. And that's the first step. You got to stop acting like it wasn't no fucking problem. We get reparations, 2026. I'm working towards it. For real. I'm talking with, I'm not talking to nobody who got money. Because they don't want it bad enough. I can't ask Tyler and Oprah. And, you know what I'm saying? Will Smith. Mother, they, they good. They don't need it. We going straight to the bottom. We going with motherfuckers that's hungry. You know what I'm saying? We going to show, we going to show, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have a million stamp march. Just have everybody on food stamp. Whoever fucked up out here, man, your job fired you, taxes fucked you over that shit. You had late fees for an overdraft fee that you ain't really had. Yeah. Come on. That's who you gotta get. They don't like it. They don't like when you get the poor people rounded up. If you can get motherfuckers to stop being like this black and white shit and be like, hey, hey. All y'all broke now. Yeah. So come on, man. You let black people get some reparations, we finna go, hey, economy gonna be good for the next 10 years. We buying all type of shit. You just gotta sell it and, and make sure it's good and get prepared to get talked too crazy. Cause, oh yeah, it's gonna be at least 10 years of get back. You give us money, every white person is boy. Oh boy, <laughs> carry these groceries to the car. <laughs> hey boy, bring my car around. Me and the missus are ready to leave. Yeah, it's, it's, y'all just gonna have to wear that. It's, it's not, it, don't, it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad, y'all be all right. Y'all be all right. And then everything balanced out. Equilibrium, that's what they call it. And that's what we trying to get here, man. English majors, we here at the headquarters. Y'all know what it is, man. Um, that's about it. I ain't got no more advice for you. But, you know, if you need something, you know where to find me. You know how to reach me. You can send the mail. You don't even have to put no stamp on it. Just, just throw it. We take messages in bottles. It don't matter. You send an owl like Harry Potter. We don't give a fuck. Hey, owls will kill you, too. Did you know that? Yeah. And they don't make no noise when they fly. Yeah. Yeah. You thought they was a motherfucker eating Tootsie Pops. No. <laughs> they are motherfucking silent murder raptors. For real. Yeah. I told you, we always got some shit you might not know. English majors, see? They calling in. They calling in right now, man. I'm telling you. Let's, <laughs> we out of here, man. That's it. Let's go.